In this video, we're talking about modeling in Hake HMS. So let's get started. First of all, open the Hake HMS software. So this is how the window looks like. Okay, you can see the uh, title bar over there and the different tools. You, you can visualize different panels over here. Right now they are empty, but uh, as the as we gradually progress on, we'll find out the function of each panel. Okay, the first one that is in the topmost left panel that is uh, the Warset Explorer below that you can see the component editor this area this gray area is actually uh, the gis interface the way we perform the gis applications and below that area is uh, is the uh, status toolbar where we can you know see the messages information about the errors or any accomplished task it's like you know the status bar okay the first thing we need to do is we need to create a new project so go to create a new project and give the name for example let's say project one i'm naming it project one and if you want to give description you can give description okay the next thing we need to be sure is what the unit system we want to use i'll be using metric system okay and let's get create now that we have created project you can see a folder project one is being created has been created in uh, this watershed explorer and in the component editor you can see name project one and so on okay the next step what we do is we add the uh, terrain data for that we need to go to components create component and click on terrain data okay right now i'm naming it terrain one next let me browse the file uh, I have been my HMS and region. Okay, now I've selected my terrain file. I'll click on finish. So you can see the terrain data folder has been created in the Watershed Explorer. Okay, if I expand it, you can see terrain one. But despite that, nothing is visible in the screen right now. Okay, we'll see that. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we need to create a base scene. Okay, for that we need to go to components, create component, and basin model okay basin one i'll create it now you can see a basin model and there's basin one now you can see the basin interface right now it's empty okay what we want to do is we want to assign the coordinate system okay for that let's go to a gis and click on coordinate system in our case uh, we'll be going for predefined if you have your own uh, system then in the computer you can browse it okay otherwise you can go to predefined and in my case this is UTM uh, UTM zone mine is 44 uh, hemisphere northern correct and I am selecting double just 84 okay then select and set it now that we have set our coordinate system still nothing is visible for that what we want to do is go to select basin and in the terrain data you can see none is there we have to select it let's select terrain one and let me select terrain now you can see the terrain data it's visible in the uh, inter GIS interface okay right click in the empty area go to map properties sorry map layers and if you go to draw properties then you can change the symbology uh, okay the coloring the maximum and minimum of elevation and so on so you can do that easily not a big deal okay right now i'm not making any changes the next step we want to do is we want to uh, change some setting okay so for changing the setting we go to tools and program settings uh, right now we want to change setting defaults okay so what you want to change the unit system is metric we've already assigned sub basin loss so there are many options we using SCS cob number right if it's already selected it's fine if not then we have to select SCS cob number so in sub basin transform we'll be using SCS you know hydrograph sub basin base flow there are many options we'll not using any none and for the reach routing we'll be ta taking the musking gum okay and click on okay if you define all these things you don't need to worry about it later okay the next step what we want to do is we want to go to gis and pre-process things it basically means it will fill up the things if present any okay just like in the gis okay it's being filled up okay 
if you right click and open map layer you can see sync field and sync locations okay new layers are created similarly after filling the sync what we do is we'll pre-process the drainage it basically means we'll create we'll be creating uh, the flow direction and flow accumulation file just like in case of gis arc gis or qgis right so it depends upon your area catchment area if it is bigger it might take time if it's smaller it won't take much time and but in my experience the speed is better than that of arcgis because it would take much longer time in arcgis but in hex hms it's relatively faster okay the business being created okay we, you can see the right we have all these uh flow accumulation and flow direction file it's pretty fast in comparison to arcgis in my experience okay and similar you don't need to uh, you know input the dam or input all those things it automatically uh, calculates it not a big deal okay next step what we're going to do is we go to gis and we're going to identify the streams okay so here it says uh, area to define streams you know, in kilometer square in my calculation it has to be 50 kilometer square uh, square kilometer for my area right so it might differ in your context so uh, if you keep the lower value then there might be a lot of uh, sub basins which you don't want okay and uh, we're not sure what value actually is appropriate so it's like you know we have to reiterate it and uh, you can find a particular value so no need to worry just you keep trying through one value and if it doesn't work we can again try it later so not a big deal okay so in my case it is 50 square kilometers so i'm clicking okay so it's identifying the streams now you can see new layer has been added the stream layer okay let me zoom in be for better viewership okay there you go now i want to divide into sub basins for that go to gis and breakpoint manager okay to divide into sub basins we need to have one uh, outlet point okay so to get the outlet point we have to go to break manager so this is a plus sign with the red dot in the center it's a breakpoint creation tool click here and zoom into the section where you want to put the outlet so let's say in my case i'm inserting my breakpoint here while inserting make sure that your breakpoint intersect with the stream file okay i'm naming it breakpoint one create it's created the next step is we go to gis and delineate elements and delineate it's being delineated and now the sub basins have been created okay you can see that you can see three sub basins here okay each sub basin i want to uncheck some of the layers so let me go to map layer i don't want this uh flow accumulation flow direction sync locations sync field and terrain data i don't want them so you can see sub basin 1 sub basin 2 sub basin 3 if you click and expand the basin then you can see all those sub basins and one rich okay one rich is there so we divided into sub basins okay so if you get more than many sub basins then it means that uh, you have to re-enter the value of the area right so you can for that you can go to identify streams again and uh, keep on reiterating it until you get the uh, exact better number of you know the sub basins right appropriate number of sub basins okay the next step what we want to do is uh, we want to enter the values okay so for that let's go to parameters and let's go to loss and let's go to scs cob number okay so in my case 
I'm entering the cob number is 66 66 and 66 now it might differ and even within the sub basins they might not have the same cob number okay so if you have the idea or if you have information about the individual sub basins value then you can enter them or all it's better you have the uh, cob number for each sub basin okay instead of fraction i'm keeping it zero at the moment zero and zero i'm clicking apply apply and close okay now now if you really want to do detailed analysis for that you need to provide different this cob number for each sub basin for that you have to uh, export this uh, save file to arcgis get one cob number raster value and using the uh, statical zone uh, function you can extract the value for each sub basins okay but for the uh, convenience i'm using same value for each sub basins okay the next step is we again go to parameters and this time I'm going to transform an SES unit hydrograph. Okay, lag time. This is the most important factor. Okay, lag time. In my case, I've calculated it to be 300 for sub basin 2. It would be 300. Sub basin uh, 1, uh, it would be 290. And for this one, I'm going with. 180 okay now the various empirical formulas to calculate the lag time okay you might be familiar with all those empirical formulas available in the textbook or internet not a big deal i'll click in apply and close so if you want really want to manually calculate the uh, lag time for that you need to have uh, the information about different variables for that you need to go select the basin go to parameters characteristics and sub basins okay here you can see uh, the information in sub basin the longest flow path in kilometer all the slope values uh, basin slope basin relief elongation ratio so and so using all some of these variables you can calculate the uh, lag time first of all you calculate the time of concentration actually and with the time of concentration you can calculate the lag time okay that won't be a big deal for you okay now we've done that let's go to parameters again and go to routing and in the routing let's go to muskingum and in the muskingum i'm keeping hr at 0 0.5 let's start with 5 and 0 0.25 for the x value okay this might change in different iterations okay okay i'm applying apply and close now if you check individual basins for example the loss you can see the cob number is here the instant abstraction has been entered here you could manually enter but i did uh, as a whole right okay the next step we're going to create is go to component create component and get the time series data okay it gauge one and it's precipitation gauge create in the time series data precipitation gauge you can see gauge one okay in the gauge one mm, okay we are going to select the time interval would be in one hour we'll need mm per hour so you need to be incremental millimeters it's fine let me expand gauge one you can see okay gauge one the start date uh okay i'm giving it 2020 time hour would be let's say one and still one gen 20 20 the time would be uh, let's say 11 okay so that's the time window I'm defining and I need to enter the data okay for that I'm going to enter let's say if you have your data then you can copy it from uh, let's say excel and paste it here or you can manually enter i have uh, 0 0.25 0 0.6 0 0.9 and uh, 1 1.2 1 1.5 1 1.3 1 1.1 0 0.8 
0 0.3 and 0 okay so I've entered it so you can visualize it in the graph if you click on the graph you can visualize the graph okay this is how it looks okay it's fine it's first January 2021 to 11 okay now we have uh, done this the next step what we do is we go to uh, components create component and we need to create a metallurgical model okay so I'm clicking metallurgical model create let me expand it it's met one okay so here in the metal model, what you do is precipitation would be specific hydrograph and replace missing you can see about compute we won't be selecting we will set to set to default okay the next thing is we go to basin and here you could see basin one includes of basins no option is there you could select yes okay and within this is hydrograph we don't select the gaze right now the, there are none we have to select the gaze one gaze one and gaze one okay okay let me save it okay the next step what you want to do is go to component create component and we need to have the control specifications control one create let me expand control one in the control one we have to specify the date start date what was that let me go to time series and okay 1 Jan 2020 so it's it's 1 1 Jan 2020 start time would be 1 0 0 in date we will be keeping let's say a gap of three days so 04 Zen 2020 and time would be let's say 1200 I'll be keeping the time interval for 10 minutes okay and let me save it okay the final stage is we need to go to compute and create compute and click on simulation run it's run one fine okay basin right now we have only one basin so basin one click on next uh we'll be taking met one obviously metal little model only one okay and the control model okay let's finish it okay now go to the compute tab and you could see the simulation runs let me expand it here you can see the run okay so you can click here in the uh, compute all elements and it's running okay it has run and it has uh, produced some results let me go to the result tab you can see the simulation runs let me expand it there's run one then run one there's a global summary so it, it has all the information drainage area the peak discharge time of peak and volume and so on the overall discharge of the summaries here if you want to see the information of individual submissions click on them click on the graph you can see uh, the death in mm the flow uh, discharge curve okay so this is how it produces the discharge curve okay now it's not necessarily true that the whatever curve it produces is accurate because there might be changes uh, it's, it's very difficult to actually replicate the real life scenario in the software right so so that we need to uh, validate it so for the validation first of all we have to perform the calibration okay the calibration and validation they are subject to another video we'll discuss in another video but this is how it works right this is all about the HMS modeling. Okay.